Well, welcome everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is Mifa's presentation on athletics and college admissions. And we have a great presenter tonight, Dr. Mike Janicki, and he is director of guidance at Wareham Senior High School. And Hello. we will, let me do a, a, a little bit of logistics here. So we are going to, re we are recording this session and we will send this to you tomorrow along with the slides. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the question and answer the Q&A section and we'll keep up with those and we'll, I'll make sure to ask Mike anything we don't get to at the end of his presentation. Good. And if you need closed captioning, you can hit the live transcript button and you'll get to see the words that we're speaking. And other than that, um, I'll just say a few words. Oh, and there we are, Mike. The, yeah. <laughs> I didn't introduce myself, actually. Julie Shields Rutina. I'm the Director of College Planning, Education, and Training at MIFA. And here we have Mike with me <laughs> this evening as well. And for those of you who don't know MIFA, MIFA has been around since 1982, and our mission is to help families plan, save, and pay for college. And we have the state's uh, college savings plans, as well as low cost loans for families. And then everything else we do is offer free guidance to families at every stage of this college process. So uh, come back to the MIFA website often and you can join other webinars at mifa.org slash events. And with that, Mike, I am going to turn it over to you. All right, you bet. All right, thanks. Everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, welcome. And, um, you know, we're going to talk a lot of stuff today. Uh, so I, but I'm going to go kind of quick through some of these slides. And if there's a lot of questions at the end uh, or any questions at the end, let me know and we will uh, do what we can. One thing first want to say is that we're talking about student athletes. The emphasis is always, always on the student athlete. Um, you know, we're going to talk about eligibility in a little bit. Uh, and so really we're talking about eligibility. That's the student part of it. You're no good to a coach if you're not eligible and you're eligible by being a strong student. So let's just put that right there in front. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, NCAA, the NAIA, NJCAA um, divisions, what the difference is between everything, how you become eligible uh, to, to play, to participate, to be recruited. We'll talk about the search process. This is just as much a admissions and admissions process as it is a recruiting process. Um, again, coming back to the concept of the student athlete, this is the admissions office on, on all of these campuses are gonna be just as much a part of, um, of this as, as you go through the process. And then finally, we'll talk about just some other issues, items to consider, some questions to consider, uh, questions to ask coaches. Um, along the way, one thing to really keep in mind is there, for each individual student, um, there may be individual uh, specific, school specific um, things that you have, questions that you have involve your coach, involve the athletic director, um, involve your guidance counselor. That's where you're going to get the majority, the lion's share of information that's specific to, to you, okay? So that's really what we're gonna talk about tonight. Uh, all right, next slide, let's, dive, let's just jump right into this. So we're gonna start with the biggest of all of them, the NCAA, um, over 1,100 colleges and universities, um, the three different divisions, you know, almost a half a million student athletes. The this, this surprising part is that just about 2% of high school athletes are offered some form of athletic scholarship. And that's not full rides. You know, we're talking, you know, a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks, all the way up to, you know, your full ride scholar athletes. Um, the three divisions, are not based on school size. So you'll have, you know, Bryant, Bryant University um, with, you know, a handful thousand students being a division one school. And they're the same level as 
University of Michigan with upwards of 100,000 students. Um, it is not based on school size. What it is based on, as far as the different divisions, is the money, uh, the facilities, the institutional commitment that each individual university um, will commit to their athletic program. You may have um, an institutional commitment to football or basketball and be division one and then division two at um, in other sports, uh, swimming, gymnastics, whatever, um, or vice versa. Um, but it really is the institutional commitment to, to the uh, athletic program. Over 90 national championships, you know, we all know March Madness, we all know the college uh, football, um, you know, the bowl, bowl system, um, you know, but those are the obvious ones. And then all the way down to rifle and sailing and cross country skiing. Um, you know, so it's, it's the whole gamut of, of um, athletic competition. All right, next slide. So we're looking at, you know, the, the differences between divisions one, two, and three. The big thing is division one, as a student athlete, this is really a full-time job. I mean, it, it, the hours that are invested, quite honestly, are in season can be well over a full-time job um, hours, you know, between uh, film sessions, team meetings, um, you know, well beyond practices, travel, um, you know, division one, you're going to be traveling longer hours, you know, well outside of your geographic region. Um, there is, you know, a lot of different scholarship opportunities because the money invested, the financial institution, the financial investment that each of these universities have um, uh, put into the program is, you know, just, just larger scale, just larger scale. Um, most are not full scholarships. It's one thing to keep in mind. Um, most athletes are not receiving a full scholarship. They may receive additional scholarships in the form of um, academic, uh, academic grants or student grants, um, whether it's not necessarily an athletic scholarship, but they may be able to um, offer additional monies, scholarships in uh, other ways. Division two is a larger emphasis on the student. Um, it's not as um, time investment uh, for the student. Um, they are going to be more regional competition. And, um, you know, so you're not going to have the longer travel. Um, it'll be more within each, you know, competition within the conference. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a big time program, um, but without the division one pressure is one way to phrase it. Uh, division three is going to be a much shorter practice and competition season. Uh, there are no athletic scholarships at the division three level. However, a coach may be able to finagle um, additional scholarship money uh, through other means. Um, but it is there are no athletic scholarships at the division three level. Then one one another piece that's not listed here is simply club uh, club sports. Most will be at your larger, your larger institutions, but are still high, highly competitive. Um, tryouts, coaches, travel, um, where you can essentially compete at a division three, you know, level um, at a division one um, school. Um, so club is also if, if, if might be a, 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 something to consider or think about as uh, you're going through this process or just something to be aware of. Okay, next slide. So the other two major uh, organizations here, the National Association of, Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. Um, you know, this is, this is a predominantly more popular Midwest, Great Lakes regions, um, you know, smaller smaller colleges and universities. Um, they do offer athletic scholarships, um, kind of compares the emphasis and um, commitment 
uh, to the Division II, to a Division II program. Um, and then the National Junior College Athletic Association, uh, this is going to be your, um, you know, your community colleges, your, your junior colleges, um, and it can really be a good option to, if, you're, if you have the aspirations of going to a D1 or 2 program, but you're, you know, you may need a year to, you know, strengthen your academic or athletics, um, you know, to kind of take that next step, uh, this can be a strong option um, uh, for you moving forward. Okay, next slide. So eligibility, we're going to start with, um, we're going to start with division three. Bottom line is 2.3 or take a knee, you know, get that, get that, uh, get that straight. Um, you know, that's where we're going to start. That is the, um, the highest um, GPA or the lowest GPA that uh, um, they would accept. Um, but let's, you know, just understand 2.3 or take a knee. That's kind of where the division one is going to, um, going to start. Um, all right, so let's dive into this information here. Next slide. Okay. So eligibility, um, what we're looking at here, division one and two are fairly similar. Um, the brackets there will differentiate what really the only difference between division one and two. Graduate high school, that's, that's a given. Um, you need to complete 16 core courses. So that's gonna be your, your English, math, science, social studies, and then additional coursework in those major core classes. Um, in the case of division one, you need a two point, like I just mentioned, you need a 2.3. Division two, the minimum GPA is a 2.2 in those 16 core classes. When you submit your um, transcript, they will recalculate, um, meaning they will look at only those core course requirements and take your GPA from there. So if you think your GPA is, you know, a, I don't know, a three something, that's probably, it could be because you're, they're also including substantially easier coursework, non-college prep coursework, um, you know, phys ed, art, um, elective classes that are not at the college prep level. And it may be a, a, an inflated GPA. So keep in mind when your transcript gets recalculated, when your GPA gets recalculated, they're going to be looking at those 16 core course requirements. Okay. Quick thing about the SATs, because um, there are few opportunities to take the SATs right now. Um, SATs are being waived for the class of 2022. Um, unsure of the class of 23 yet. Um, that, you know, we just had a, con a conversation with the NCAA the other day. Um, they are, they will be holding their meetings through the spring to determine what to do for the class of 2023. Um, and that will, I'm only assuming, will be dependent on how often, how predominant the SATs will be offered. Um, if you have below a 2.3, 2.2, it is possible to be what's called an academic redshirt. Um, if you are redshirted, you can practice, you can earn the scholarship, but you cannot play in any competitive game. Um, so that's a big risk for a coach. You know, they're not going to they're not going to waste a scholarship position on somebody who's not um, able to 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 participate in competition. So, um, but it is a thing. If you if you have below a two point three, two point two, you could be an academic redshirt. Um, if you are a non qualifier. Um, meaning that you don't meet any of this, 
Um, you know, you can, it's possible to still be admitted to the school, um, but you cannot have any participation whatsoever. Um, you can't practice, you're not scholarship eligible, no gameplay, but you might be admitted to the school. Okay, and that will come through when, um, through the NCAA eligibility clearinghouse. For division three, um, basically it's, it meet the same admission standards uh, for any other student athlete, anybody admitted. Um, you know, division three does not have to participate in the clearinghouse, having their transcripts reviewed. Um, division one and two uh, do. But uh, Division Three is simply admission to the institution is the um, eligibility to participate. Okay, next slide. Um, this is just kind of a, a clip art uh, of a number of handouts that you may see in uh, your guidance office uh, from the uh, NCAA webpage. Um, the, the picture there in the top left is the sliding scale of GPA to SAT scores. What the sliding scale, or an ACT score, what the sliding scale indicates is um, if you have a, like, like it says here, if you have a 3.5, the minimum SAT score that you need to have is a 400. Um, and it works, it works its way down. Um, at, for the 2.3, the minimum SAT score you would have to have is a 980. And that's your com uh, combination of your English and math, um, your highest English, your highest math, even from two different test dates. Um, but the, they'll use the um, sliding scale to determine the SAT scores. And as I said, for the class of 22, um, SATs are not required. Moving forward, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, and then these are just the, you know, four years of English, four, three years of um, uh, math, uh, algebra one, typically it's algebra one, algebra two, and geometry, um, two years of physical science, uh, additional English and math, uh, two years of social studies, and additional courses. Keep in mind, these are at these are courses at the college prep level at least so college prep honors ap ib um, this does not include um, your elective art music phys ed uh, introduction level classes driver's ed um, you know i know you know many schools offer ap art yes that that can count as an additional class um, it, it, but if it's not at the college prep level, it will not count. Some schools offer dual enrollment for eighth grade students to take high school classes. Those can be used for this. If your, if those eighth grade classes, those freshman level classes taken in the eighth grade, if those are on the high school transcript, then, then by all means, those can, um, those can be used for, uh, for you. Okay, next slide. Quick thing about eligibility. You're going to register through the eligibility center. Uh, recommend doing this in your sophomore year. If, if this is something you are looking to do, um, you know, to compete at the division one or two level, um, you know, recommend doing it in the sophomore year. Um, it's easy to do. Um, you know, you'll you'll register. You'll fill in some basic, um, you know, some personal information, some education history. You'll ask a little bit about your sports participation history, um, any kind of awards, clubs, you know, AAU programs, teams that you've been involved in. What they're looking for is to establish your L, your amateur status. That because um, you're going to need to be certified as an amateur athlete. Um, that you have not been paid, you have not received any um, monetary award for, for playing. Um, I think it's this year, I believe it's $90 to register. Um, you know, if and when you do have SAT, ACT scores, those will be sent 
from the college board or the ACT. Um, you know, similar, same process as you would send your scores to a college. Exact same process, you'd have your scores sent to the NCAA, and then your high school will upload your transcript to, to the eligibility center. Okay, so that's eligibility for the NCAA. Let's talk next slide. And the eligibility for the um, NAIA. Um, first, and again, I, I have not heard how they are treating the SAT scores. Um, uh, so I apologize for not having that right now, but I'm not, I, I believe they're still, wa they're waving, but I don't want to say something that's wrong uh, there. The second eligibility um, is that you have a minimum of a 2.0. Uh, so that would be a, a C, a C average, 75. Um, and, you know, the, the, in this case, the GPA will not um, recalculating on a subset of scores. So, so they're looking at your whole, uh, your whole transcript. And this, the, the last part is the unique one is that you have to graduate in the top half of your senior class. Um, this is unique to, um, to any of the eligibility systems. Um, and they will ask that your principal or guidance counselor sends a certified letter or a, um, a sealed uh, letter stating that you are ranked in the top half of, uh, of your graduating class. And the registration process is the same uh, similar process as the NCAA, where you'll go online, you'll fill out a, an eligibility um, uh, request online, and that's and you know go through that process uh, just the same. Okay, next slide, please. And for the National Junior College Athletic Association, um, simply you know you're looking at being a high school graduate. Um, academic good standing. Um, essentially, what they're looking for is that you meet the entrance requirements, that the admission requirements for that institution. Um, you know, again, certified amateur. Um, but the big thing is that you are, uh, you would be admitted to the institution regardless of your athletic involvement. Um, pretty fairly straightforward, straightforward there. Uh, next slide. For those that use, um, you know, the junior college, community college process, um, you know, oftentimes they'll be maybe thinking of using that and transferring to, um, you know, a next a next institution, a next level institution. Um, in this situation, you're you're really going to need the help of both institutions. Um, you know, the, the, the junior college, the community college, the division three school, um, you know, wherever you're starting, um, you're gonna need help of their athletic program, their, your coach is there. And then also to, to be in communication with your uh, destination school, you know, where you're looking to transfer, transfer to. Um, yeah, and then, um, you know, it's, it's whether you're a qualifier or non-qualifier, um, you know, you'll need to go through the um, uh, same eligibility center as well. Okay, just re-enter into the eligibility center and then have your transcripts sent from your originating institution. Okay, next slide. So just a quick word about the college search. Um, um, Actually, let me stop there. Are, there. are there any questions regarding eligibility? Let me, before we start getting into some of this next stuff, I know eligibility can be a big, a big piece of this. I, are there don't, any questions? I don't see any yet, but okay. everyone type them in if you, if you have them. That's great. Thanks. Okay. Um, so really what we want to do is, you know, when we're, when we're starting this search process, we want to treat this, you know, very much like, any other search process, like any other college search process. It's gonna be about fit. It's gonna be about where you're gonna be the most comfortable. Um, it can be, it's very similar to, you know, if you're in the performing arts, um, you know, or, or, you know, arts or music where you're gonna have a portfolio, 
you know, if you're putting together a video package of your highlights, that's the same thing as an art portfolio. Um, you know, when you're doing a music audition, it's the same process. So, you know, you're looking for a very select um, uh, program and, you know, treat it, treat it as such. Okay, so let's dive in here. Next slide. So really, because it's unique, because it's going to be specified um, into a, you know, a, you know, a, a, a specific program, you really should start early, you know, get a sense of what kind of campus, what kind of environment, um, do you really want to do this? Um, you know, is this something you want to commit to? Um, are you ready to take on this next level? Um, you know, really, you know, you're going to be looking at the campus setting, you know, are you going to, you know, you're not going to be looking for a skiing program in Texas. Um, you know, you want to figure out what, you know, what facilities are like, what, you know, not just the academic facilities, or not just the athletic facilities, but the academic facilities. How are they going to support the student athlete that that you are? Um, you know, some other things to think about. How does how does being a student athlete? How does that work on that college campus? Um, you know, your vacation calendar is not necessarily uh, the same as the all the other students' academic calendar. Um, you know, are you going to um, have to stay over the summer to take makeup classes where you couldn't take a full course load during season and use the summer summer as a chance to take additional classes because you couldn't take a full course load? Um, are there camps? Are there additional workouts during, um, you know, during the holiday break? You know, are you able to come home for Thanksgiving? Um, you know, things like that. You know, so be aware of what the level of commitment is uh, on campus. Okay, next slide. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to talk a little now about coaches contacts. And, um, you know, because this is similar to what I was talking about, like the, a music uh, or art portfolio, this is where the coaches are going to be doing that, their assessment. Okay. There are going to be different dates, you know, to all of these different terms that we're going to be talking about in just a bit here. Um, they'll be different for each um, each type of sport. You know, so football is going to have a different uh, system than basketball, from baseball, from softball, from gymnastics, all of that. Okay, so just something to be aware. All right. <clears throat> so. So terms you're going to need to or you'll hear along the way. Contact. Anytime a coach says anything more than hello, literally, that is how it's defined. Anytime a coach says more than hello in a face-to-face -face meeting, you know, you can walk across campus and the coach can say hello and you walk right past and that is not a contact. As soon as you say, hello, how are you? You've got yourself a contact. Um, and those are tracked. They'll be tracked, you know, the, each campus will have, you um, uh, an office, uh, they'll have an office for eligibility um, and they will track their recruiting. They'll re track um, um, current athletes. They'll track uh, potential athletes. Um, so all of these things will be um, counted and tracked. A contact period. <coughs> contact period is um, a time, a calendar time Again, it's going to be different for each sport um, where you can have a face-to-face -face contact with you, your parents. They can visit your school. They can, um, um, you know, call, write, uh, video chat. Um, but a contact period is when, you know, you can, you can have at it. Um, a dead period, again, be different from sport to sport, but you may not coach may not have a face-to-face. -face. Um, you may, they may call or write. Um, what I'm curious about now is the, the prevalence of video chats um, that just kind of popped into my head now. Um, I need to look into that. If a video chat is a face-to-face, -face, I believe it would. 
I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to look into that. I just, I just thought of that. Uh, but a dead period, you cannot have any face-to-face -face with um, the student or the parents, okay? Uh, on or off campus, okay? It doesn't matter where it is. Okay, next slide. An evaluation time. Again, this is, a, this is a specified calendar period where a coach can come to a practice, to a game. I know some students, student athletes will have a um, kind of an open gym for themselves and, you know, coach will invite coaches to that, uh, but that can only happen during an evaluation. And that evaluation period is, um, um, you know, when they can come visit the school, um, you know, watch the student compete, watch the student practice, um, but uh, may not have face-to-face -face contact with, um, you know, it's basically watch, not talk. Um, so the evaluation period is watch, not talk. Okay. Next slide. And then the official visit. Um, the official visit is when the school pays for transportation. Okay. This is when the college, when the coach is making a little bit more investment into you um, as a student athlete. And they can bring you to um, uh, up to you know two other family members. Um, they will pay. They can pay. They may. They may not um, pay for lodging and meals. Um, you know, including tickets to um, uh, athletic events on campus. Um, you know, in order for this to first happen, in order to um, be offered an official visit you must be registered and cleared by the eligibility center. Okay, that is <laughs> another reason why um, we recommend the eligibility center uh, before your, uh, into your sophomore year, because these will start into your junior year and they cannot be offered unless you've been cleared by the eligibility center. Okay, and next slide. And an unofficial visit <coughs> is one where you pay for the travel, um, the lodging, the uh, any kind of any kind of um, uh, expense associated with the visit um, is is paid for by by the family by you, um, and that's an important thing to note that it's by you, the family, and not boosters not alum, not anybody else, okay? Because that will jeopardize your eligibility. Um, that changes it from an unofficial to an official um, and will not, be, will not be permitted. Okay. Um, yep. So we've gone through, you know, you're eligible, you've done your visits, you've been, you know, you've had your conversations with the coaching staff, and you're ready to commit, um, and you're ready to sign your national letter of intent. The national letter of intent, it's, it's voluntary. Um, you know, there's just about almost, you know, almost 700 colleges, you know, division one, division two, um, not everybody um, does the national letter of intent, but it is a binding agreement, okay? So once you sign that national letter, um, you have committed to attend that school. Um, the institution agrees to provide, um, you know, financial aid scholarships. You agree to attend. And if for whatever reason, um, you, the student athlete decides to go elsewhere, uh, you will forfeit a, um, a year of competition, a one season of competition for all sports. So it's not like, well, I'm a, I play baseball and well, I'll sit out the cross country season. Um, you know, and that's my, that's my season that I'm sitting out. No, it's, it's for all, you lose your, an entire um, season for all sports. Okay. Um, but the, you know, once you get to that point, the national letter of intent is uh, a binding agreement. Okay. 
So next section here, we're going to talk about some things to consider. Um, you know, what are grades are involved? Who's, you know, are you really interested in playing and, and um, kind of how this, how this happens? Okay. Next slide. All right. So when we talk about the student athlete, some things that I want to, um, to share. Um, this top line here, Jen Rosati. When I was, I was uh, working at Providence College and was asked to staff the UConn women's basketball game against the Friars, um, I'll be honest, it wasn't much of a game. Um, but after the game, I was um, asked to, to, to work with Jen Rosati and Rebecca Lobo and their, um, the manager for the basketball team you know, was talking about Jen's schedule for, you know, the next couple of days. Well, you know, you know, ESPN wants to do a video shoot, you know, this, that, the other thing. And, you know, these are your classes for tomorrow. Like, you know, Jen had no idea um, what class she had the next day. Um, that's the level of commitment that is going to be required of a division one athlete. Um, there are supports. Um, now, obviously, we're talking about, you know, UConn women's basketball, um, you know, which is, you know, next level kind of commitment. Um, and I certainly don't blame Jen for, you know, being confused. I mean, you don't know what day it is sometimes, um, you know, having talked with and worked with um, Division One athletes, it's a major commitment. It is a substantial commitment. So you need to know that going into it. Schools, college, you know, coaches are going to require, you know, they need you to be eligible. So you're going to have your academic advisor. Um, it's going to be more than just what your guidance counselor should be doing with you right now. They're going to be making sure that you're in study hall. They're going to be making sure that you fully understand that you have the tutors, um, access to tutors that you need, that professors, you know, they'll ask professors to send them copies of their lecture, to send the academic advisor copies of um, you know, assignments and tests and quizzes um, that you will be doing on the bus, on the plane, in the hotel as you travel. Because without, you know, without your eligibility, um, you're no good to the coach, you're no good to the team, you're no good to the institution. Um, and it's not just that you're eligible uh, to be eligible to begin with as coming out of high school, you need to maintain your eligibility throughout your time at the institution. Um, you know, it's not just getting there, it's staying there. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, another reason is keep in mind that, you know, it is the student athlete. Um, the student part will lead to success after college, you know, not the athlete, the only barely 2% go on to, um, you know, the 2% the that made it out of high school to get an athletic scholarship, you know, 2% of those um, you know, we'll go pro. So it's the student, it's, it's the student part that will lead to success after, after college. Okay. Next slide. Oop, back one. <laughs> um, really very simply, you know, as far as desire to play, who's, who's desire, who wants to play? You know, this is where I, I kind of, you know, make sure that parents are cognizant of, um, you know, <laughs> Your, your dreams and aspirations for kids, um, which we all have them, we all have them, um, but who really wants to play here? Um, it's a fun ride. It's a, you know, no, no question. It's a fun ride. It's fun being courted. It's, 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 a, it's a neat little dance to, to go through. But when the rubber hits the road, who really wants to play here? Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, these student athletes have been playing uh, you know, year round club, AAU, um, town, local travel teams, all that stuff. And then the high school team for years and years and years, do they want to keep it up? And great, if they do great, fantastic, but just make sure that that's part of the conversation, part of the thinking process. Okay. So, so as you're meeting with coaches, some things to consider things to think about is really, you know, really what's a typical day like, you know, and, and, you know, in season, out of season, um, you know, are, are we, 
you know, we've, we've had conversations with, um, you know, teams that are up at four in the morning and hitting the track um, and then going to breakfast and then going back to the court. Um, you know, what is a day like? Um, you know, if you're, if you're interested in a certain major, you know, what is the academic commitment to that major? You know, if you're thinking about nursing, architecture, engineering, um, you know, those are going to be some high powered um, you know, academic studies that, you know, during season might be, might be tough. So just think about things like that. Um, you know, what are housing meal plans? Um, we all know what, um, having uh, three student athletes in the house here, I know what the, I know what our, our, our grocery bill is like, you know, but what's the, what's the housing meal plan like on campus? Um, it might be cheaper for some of us when they go to college um, to, for the grocery bill. Um, you know, what is the application process? Again, it, it's, it's, a, it's just as much an admission process into the institution as it is a recruiting process for the team. Um, you know, ask a coach what their graduation rate is. Um, you know, they're going to want to demonstrate that they can get you through and get you a four-year degree. You know, that's what this is all about, is to get your four-year degree and graduate. Um, you know, but is the coach committed to that? How? What do they do? What's their philosophy? How do they coach? Are they, you know, what kind of a teacher coach are they? Um, you know, is, are, we, are we talking Bobby Knight here? Um, you know, or not? Um, you know, what are, are there upperclassmen? You know, if you're, if you're a point guard and they're, you know, coming in, do they already have a senior, junior, sophomore as point guards? Um, you know, what does that mean for you and your playing time? Do you even care? Um, is that something what, uh, that you might be uh, interested in? Um, and also, what happens if the coach leaves? You know, what's the coach's commitment to, to the institution? Um, you know, what happens there? Um, so just some, some things to think about when you're, when you're talking, when you're meeting um, with coaches, with the institutions, but also, um, you know, I just find these are good, good things to, good, good thought points as you're looking at different schools and looking at different programs. All right, next. So how do you get seen? Um, you know, there's obviously, you know, there are recruiting websites, you know, and uh, video sites like Huddle um, that will help identify, um, you know, highlight films. Um, but really when you're, when you're reaching out, it should, ideally it would come from the student themselves, not the parent. Again, that goes back to the question of who's desire to play, okay? A coach getting emails uh, and calls from a parent, uh, you know, that carries some weight and not in the right way. They want to hear uh, from the student um, that they have, you know, leadership, character, um, independence. Um, so really, what, you know, what you want to share is, you know, obviously your name, your height, your weight, positions. Um, way to get in touch with, get back in touch with you, um, you know, give them, you know, an idea of your academics, uh, might not need to send a transcript just yet, because uh, that will all go through the eligibility center, um, you know, but send them an idea, a, a snapshot of your current academics, and then your current coaches, um, you know, contact information. Uh, whether it's your high school or, you know, club team or whatever, you know, wherever your, your, your strength is. Um, and then also if, and you should at that point, uh, have your eligibility center, your, your student ID, um, include that as well. Okay, so that's kind of how, that's one way to start getting on um, uh, coaches' radars if, if they haven't, um, Kind of reached out to you already. Okay, next slide. And then one of the last things I want to talk about is um, kind of a post grad year. And you know, these are you know, prep schools are always an option. Um, you know, used in the similar way as a junior or community college. You know, something like Bridgeton Academy or 
you know, Avon Old Farms or Kingswood Oxford or, or any number of prep schools around um, that you can use as a means of, you know, again, to improve your academics, um, you know, your, your, your athletic ability, um, your recruiting reach, um, you know, it's just another opportunity to use a post-grad program, um, you know, grade 13, essentially, uh, as a way to increase your uh, exposure to, to the system, okay? And that's, that's a lot of information in a quick amount of time. Um, and again, one thing that I would stress from the beginning, one of the first things I said was utilize your own, your current um, guidance counselor, um, your current athletic director, your current coach as, um, as, a, as a point of reference because they're the ones that are gonna know you best. They're the ones that are gonna know your realistic athletic ability, your realistic academic ability, um, and ability to balance, to find balance in everything. Um, you know, so we can, I can answer any questions that you might have here, um, but I, I encourage you to also use your, your current guidance counselor and, and coach. So Mike, thank you so much. That was uh, that was a lot of really yeah, great information. No worries. I, I'll wait a minute. I don't have any open questions. Okay. Um, I know it was very it was very thorough, but we can just wait a few moments. Yeah. If anyone does have questions, just type type them right into that Q and A or in the chat. Well, I don't see any. Oh, okay. So. I, I thank you again, and I thank everyone for um, for joining us. And we will send you the slides and the recording tomorrow as well, so that you can share that with others. And uh, yeah, have, right. a, have a have a wonderful well, evening. Let's also pop up there. Was, do you have oh. to contact oh, good. coach before applying? No, you don't. You do not have to apply the. Think of it as almost two systems. One is you're applying to the college um, because, quite honestly, you could apply to the college and and be a walk on. Um, you know they they will take um, you know some schools some programs will have walk on opportunities. R Rudy at Notre Dame, um, um, but you can apply to the school um, independent of the athletic um, process. So you do not need to talk to the coach before applying. Um, and then I don't know if you can see that in the chat, someone asked, um, how do you fill out the form for eligibility? Okay, so it's all right on, uh, um, it's an online program. And I think the other, there's in the question here in the Q&A also similar, um, do, you have to, do you have to register every year, fee every year? No. Um, so to answer both of these questions in one, in one answer, um, eligibilitycenter.net, um, you can just search NCAA eligibility. Um, you, you register, answer all the questions one time, one application fee, and um, it is not a year by year like the FAFSA. Um, um, but you just register online, very simple, basic demographic information and then some basic um, athletic um, experience questions. And then, and then that's it. Then you just, your guidance counselor will send your transcript. If you have SAT scores, send those from the college board, ACT scores from the ACT and, and that's it. Pretty straightforward. Robin, you're welcome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there one in the chat too? How do you fill out the form for eligibility? Okay, I think I just did that. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you, Mike. You bet. You bet. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Julie, we'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Bye. Thanks.